In a dream last night, a ghostly figure asked me, Do you believe in free will? I answered, Yes, I do. He then said with a smirk on his face, Well, we shall see. He then drew my attention to three piles of six cards each on the table. He then proceeded to turn each little pile face down. He then asked me to use my free will to decide how many cards to cut to the bottom for each of these piles. He pointed to the first one and asked, how many cards should I cut to the bottom? I said, how about two? So he proceeded to cut the top two cards to the bottom. What about the second pile? I said, how about four? Four cards to the bottom. He followed my instructions perfectly. What about the third pile? And I answered, uh, cut the top card to the bottom. He did so. From there, he proceeded to do a strange little mixing of the cards. He took the top and bottom card off as one. The top and bottom card off as one until he had moved all the cards from one hand to the other. He then repeated the same actions on each of the packets. I watched him like a hawk to make sure that he consistently perform the same actions, and he did. From there, he asked me whether he should deal the packets into two or three piles with stacking decided by me. And I said, sure, for the first packet, deal it out into two piles and then stack the left pile on top of the right. He performed the actions as requested. What about this one? I said, well, deal that packet out into three piles and stack those piles from left to right. And he did. He stacked the pairs from left to right. What about the final pile? And I thought for a moment, deal those cards into two piles. And he did. And then I asked him to stack the right one on top of the left. And he performed that as requested. He then gave me a choice to mix further into two or three piles any of these packets. And I thought, hmm, mix the first packet further by dealing it into three piles and stack from left to right. So he faithfully performed those actions. Any other mixing into two or three piles? I said, yes, the bottom one. Deal that out into two piles and stack the right on top of the left. Okay, he said. He then asked me, do you feel like you made those choices of your own free will? That no one was influencing you? I answered, I believe I did make those choices of my own free will. He then said, well, very good. Let's go ahead and take a look at where your choices have brought us. He then said he's going to take each of the packets and deal them out into pairs precisely in the same fashion. He had mixed the cards earlier. He took the top and bottom off as one, top and bottom off as one, set the remaining pair down. He then repeated those actions for the second packet. Top and bottom, top and bottom, final pair. And then for the third packet, top and bottom, top and bottom, final pair. He then said, even though you believe the choices you've made were made freely and independently of anyone else, I'm going to prove to you that that is not the case. He then drew my attention to the top row and said, exactly one of these pairs of cards has values that add to six. And in fact, the values of those cards that add to six will be an ace 
and a five. Okay, let's check. Two and a three. Don't add to six. Ace and a four. Don't add to a six. There it is, the ace and five that add to a six. And then I replied, well, that could have just been chance, really, right? I said, well, let's proceed. The second row here, exactly one of these pairs adds to six. And in fact, I can tell you exactly the values of the cards that will add to six. They will be a two and a four. Let's take a look. An ace and a two, don't add to six. A three and a five, don't add to six. A four and a two, add to six, as I predicted. And then he said, well, just to drive home the reality that you do not have free will, I'm going to tell you what the third row consists of. Exactly one of the pairs in the final row consists of cards that add to six. And the values of those cards are a three and a three. So let's check. Four and an ace don't add to six. A three and a three add to six, as predicted. So as long as this does not add to six, my prediction was perfect. Two and five add to seven. I perfectly predicted the outcome. That's a consequence of the choices you made supposedly using your free will. And then I realized the ghostly figure was looking less and less angelic. And it dawned on me that I was sitting across from a little devil. And I turned to him and said, You might think that this proves that I do not have free will. But the reality is, the choices you gave me were choices that would make no difference to the outcome we're both witnessing here. He then said with a bit of consternation, that's not possible. Obviously, the choices you made led to this outcome. And then, with a little reflection, I turned to him and said, I know exactly how you accomplished this and how the choices you gave me were not genuine choices. They were choices that did not and could not have affected the final outcome you claim you saw from the start. He then said, you show me how it's possible to do what we've done here without your choices genuinely making a difference. I said, very good. This is how it could be done. These very cards are gathered together. This is the pair that you want to add to six on the top row. This is a pair that you do not want to add to six, as well as this one. Okay, that will make up our first little pile. Same thing here. We have the pair that adds to six, a pair that doesn't add to six, and a pair that doesn't add to six either. Here we have a pair that does not add to six, the pair three three that does, and a pair that does not add to six. Now the order of these pairs really won't make a difference as long as you keep them in pairs. So this is what you could have done. You took this packet here and you dealt it out into a left and right pile. What does that do? It puts each pair of cards in a cyclic relationship to one another. Stack them how you wish. This could have been the packet you started with. In other words, it would work just fine. The ace and four are in a cyclic relationship. 
but they add to five. The two and three are in a cyclic relationship, but they add to a five. The ace and five that we want add to six and are in a cyclic relationship. This is a two cycle with cycle length three. Okay, we do the same thing with this packet. Those pairs of cards can be put in a cyclic relationship by just dealing them into two piles. And so this will be what we call a two cycle with cycle length three. So there we go. Three and five add to eight. Ace and two add to three. Four and two add to six. So they're in a cyclic relationship. Same thing here. If we just deal these out into two piles, random stacking, this is a, a packet that you could have started with that will make all of this work just fine. So once again, the two and the five are in a cyclic relationship, but add to seven. Three and the three are in a cyclic relationship, but add to six, which is what we want. And the four and one are in a cyclic relationship, but add to five. So the very packets that you began with could have actually been these here. So here's the first one. Here's the second one. And here's the third one. Well, how does it help me to have these packets in a cyclic relationship? Well, that allows us then to cut as many cards from the top to the bottom without harming that characteristic. So it will still be cyclic if we cut one card to the bottom or five cards to the bottom. It won't matter. Here I'll cut three. Here I'll cut four. Okay. These are still cyclic packets. From there, you just performed this Klondike shuffle. The effect that has is it converts cyclic packets to mirrored packets. And mirrored packets are needed for the dealing out into two and three piles that you asked me to do or asked me to state. Because these are mirrored, these can be dealt out into as many piles as we like, as long as that number of piles is a divisor of the packet size, which is six. So this packet can be dealt into two piles with random stacking, three piles with random stacking from left to right or right to left, and it will not harm the fact that this is a mirrored packet. Same thing here, same thing here. So none of the choices that you gave me along the way will fundamentally change the outcome. Because this is mirrored, and it has that one important pair, the ace and five that add to six, what that means then is when you perform the Klondike shuffle, you pull this and this card off together. That one and that one get pulled off together. This one and this one get pulled off together, and there's the ace and the five. They get pulled off together. So on the top row, you know for a certainty only one pair adds up to six, and that pair consists of an ace and a five. The same thing will be true for the second packet. Klondike shuffle, pairs to the table. Exactly one of these will add to six, and it will be a two and a four. And there it is. Finally, the last one, Klondike pairs to the table. And exactly one pair will add to six. And it's going to be the three and the three. And there it is. And the others will not. So you did not prove that I don't have free will because the choices you gave me were choices that would make no difference to the final outcome that you were looking for. And as I explained all of this, the little devil became more and more frustrated and then suddenly vanished from view.
leaving me alone with my three rows of cards, each of which has exactly one pair, adding to six.